I'm going to go through a follow-up demo to the demo I had just a few days ago. Uh, changes that I've made, I'm no longer powering the Arduino through the USB connection, but I'm using the power from the USB connection I'm using to power the RF board as well as to get data to the computer. Um, this will be a whole lot closer to the setup I'll have when I transfer into the console. Another difference between what I have now and what will actually be in the console, I will not be using the entire Arduino board. I will simply be using an ATtiny85 chip. Um, since I only have a very limited number of I.O. pins I need and there's not much code that's involved, I can use a chip such as this and it'll be very cheap, it'll install very small, and um, I can use my Arduino board for further projects in the future. Right now my computer is on and I have my power switches connections going from the header on the motherboard onto my breadboard and that switch is um, used here on the RF board so computer is on, RF board is in a resting state on and so I will give a two second button press to the RF board and the computer should power off and the RF board should go into an off state so two second button press the controller was turned off the RF board was put into an off state and the computer is shutting down so now the computer is completely shut down and the RF board is off I will give a two second button press to the RF board which should turn the um, computer on and send the RF board through the initialization sequence. So another two second button press. We see the initialization sequence and the power on the computer is turned on. And while the computer is not fully booted yet, since the RF board operates completely apart from that, in terms of syncing operations, I can go ahead and use the sync button in order to try and sync up a new controller. So I'll give that a press and we should see the sync attempt to be created um, with the controller. Um, I can then press the sync button on my controller and it will sync to channel one. The only other functionality that I've left off as of now is using the Xbox 360's guide button in order to power on the console. Um, I would have to be able to hook up a 360 and look at the output on the data pin in order to figure this out and since I don't have any feasible way of reading the data out because it operates at a low frequency 250 Hertz um, I don't have any way of seeing what signals are being sent back and forth, which would I, which I then ha would have to monitor in code. Um, this is just a very small piece of functionality that I'm going to leave out. I can still power down the computer from the Xbox's guide button, thanks to the software that's built in, but um, I just won't be able to turn the computer on with the button, which, like I said, is just a very minor point. In the future, if I find some time, I might go back and add this, but I would say that most likely not since it's such a minor feature.